Hey there guys, Dark Suck here, and uh, today we're going to take a look a bit at the Almin break a little bit, and uh, do a little bit of uh, splicing as well, and uh, maybe some of you guys know about uh, sound splicing and break beats and stuff like that, and if that's the case, then you might not really need this video, um, but uh, this video, uh, we're going to go a little bit through the Almin break. If you haven't heard of the Almin break, there's a, a very large history about it. You can see other videos about the Amen break, but it basically is the foundation uh, for a lot of um, uh, junglism, drum and bass uh, sort of stuff. And it's it's very uh, popular loop, particularly uh, used even in hip hop and rap and stuff like that, or then the NWA stuff. And it's really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool breakbeat, and I think part of the catch on it is um, how it kind of inverses itself uh, on the uh, last two bars of uh, the uh, loop. And um, so, uh, if you haven't ever if you haven't heard it before, I, I'm I'm sure you guys have. So, um, but at any rate, um, the almond break was originally well is considered to be at. 136 uh, BPM and uh, I have two samples of the Amen break here and uh, they will be available for download at the bottom and maybe you can get to splicing them up uh, the way you like and stuff like that but let's take a listen uh, to the Amen break it's very popular what the hell is that what the fuck um I'm not sure what that's all about. Oh, ha ha! Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's turn that off. Um. So yes, that's the Amen break. I had my EQ one, so whatever. Uh, I like that. Um, and um, and then I took. Well, I'll get into that a little bit. And here's the second sample um, that I have as well. I have two different samples of it. One of them is the original, and one of them is uh, one I found off uh, uh, some website while checking out this whole thing. So um, here's the other one. So yeah, it's pretty tasty. It's pretty tasty um, little thingy thingy uh, for a sample and stuff. And this is what it kind of looks like a little bit and um, here's the uh, MIDI file for it as well and this is just basically the essen essential aspect of it and uh, you'll notice that uh, how it how it goes right here pretty simple that's the MIDI you can we can hear it here okay and that's via MIDI with uh, my own little kind of kit made and stuff and um, there's several different ways to go about uh, setting this sort of thing up so um, one uh, there is a way that uh, let's see when you're using Ableton so let's just take this one here for example and there's a couple things that you can do to it and I'm going to show you guys how to do it today um, one you can right click on it and you can convert the drums to a new MIDI track okay and what this will do is create basically a drum rack uh, and then create not from the sample pieces okay it, it's not going to create it from the sample pieces it's going to just create a MIDI file and derive the uh, drum sets and stuff I'll show you so we're going to go ahead and convert it to a drum a drum uh, rack alright and this is uh, the drum rack and you'll notice that uh, it does this and that's that right there and it sounds like kind of it, it doesn't sound too good initially when uh, when you do it this way and it just constructed a raw MIDI file from a and and then create in, inserted a basic drum kit and what you can do is you can go and get different kits if you want like uh, I don't know you can go ahead and find like a 808 in the presets or 909 or anything like that um, let's go with the 808 classic and put it in there and you can drop it uh, and it's pretty much standardized the way you see it 
um, across the board for a lot of the drum kits. And that's like you made your own drum kit. So, um, and we'll solo this. And this is what this is what it ended up coming out as. You slice it, not slice it, but um, turn it into a MIDI file because it turns it into a MIDI file and then takes source uh, samples from your library in pre-assembled kits, if that makes any sense. So, and here we go. Kind of a far distant uh, from what we heard before. Okay. And, and but the idea here is, is you, you can adjust it all you want at this point once you have it converted to a MIDI file. And uh, you'll notice that all the different parts are different colors here, like there's some white ones in here. And you could, you could change them all, bring them all up, you know, if you wanted to, and then just kind of mellow it out or however, you know. And these are basically our velocity, velocity pieces. So you can make each one heavier or higher or whatever, you know, however you want to do it. And, yeah. And, and this can be used with any drum loop that you can find like any kind of break beats there's tons of break beat um, samples out there and you could just take a break beat sample and then um, turn it into a drum file just like that pretty easy and then you can even customize it yourself so I mean the possibilities are pretty much endless using that technique um, when it comes to uh, converting any kind of um, break beat or drum roll or anything like that you can get some pretty interesting results doing it this way um, so that's one way uh, that you can do it. Here's another way that's pretty popular um, that goes way back uh, when it comes to actually splicing up breaks, you know, or splicing up different parts. And um, you can actually do a right click right here, and then you can convert um, slice, where is it? Slice to new MIDI track. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to cut automatically all the elements in this loop and move it into a drum kit and um, you can go eighth note sixteenth if you want um, let's just go for eighths uh, just to be practical and it's going to go ahead and make 32 um, different slices so here it is right here and we're just going to solo that and um, this is what we come up with right here Okay, and all it really did was just take the different uh, slices and put them in, okay? And each individual one is actually editable. So you can take like slice one, and if you move in just really close, you could see that it's right about there. You know, and, and it, it does a pretty good accurate way of, uh, it, it does it pretty accurately, you know, pretty accurate. But each one is individually uh, manipulatable, so. And I'm, I'm using my uh, MIDI hit. Okay, and also at the same time, you can also filterize them and stuff like that the way you want. Oops. Like right within the drum rack itself. So you got. So that's. You know, you can you can tweak around with the uh, resolution and frequencies if you want. And another thing that I like to do sometimes too is you can go in add effects to certain ones. You know, um, like a reverb or something, and then a simple delay or something. You know, so you can do it that way. Okay. Now the cool thing about it when you do it this way is you can actually just, you can go and make your own, you know, uh, when you slice it up too, like this. Okay. And it'll take, it'll take those samples and move them around a little bit, uh, quite a bit actually, because it's using slice 10 or slice 11 uh, when you manipulate it this way. And this gives you a, an incredible, you know, kind of a, a cool way to, um, how can I put it? Just kind of come up with something. If you're just looking up for first something random or something like that, you know, 
um, then you know this is kind of a cool way to do a bit, do, go about it. So then uh, we change the MIDI file using the same drum rack and this is what it sounds like. So you can kind of see where I'm going with that a little bit, you know. And once you take a splice, um, you know, once you have something spliced up like that, uh, you know, it, it, it reduces the amount of time it might take uh, to um, come up with stuff a little bit, you know. And, and it's kind of a nice little shortcut. Um, some people might frown. Some some might frown on this sort of concept um, because it is it is sampling. But, I mean... There, you got to realize that there's an incredible uh, sampling revolution that happened in the 90s uh, when it comes to the history of the almond break. And it, this is just an example of the almond break. I mean, there's thousands of almond breaks. I mean, not almond breaks, but thousands of different breaks out there uh, that are available that are, can be sliced up, you know. So when you're using it in practicality for like a drum and bass or something, um, you know, you can take it. Okay, and a lot of the time when you're actually doing drum and bass or using a break too, there's ways to draw out the frequencies. Um, I don't know. You, you can. You can do it if you want to. Um, we'll do it this way, and we will... Da, 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 here. Then we can cut out... Um, we can go ahead and just start cutting out the... Uh, high points and stuff like that with this so then it, it, it gets a little bit a lot tinnier and then you can take out the bottom end and keep the high end and it kind of makes kind of a, a for a cool background result So um, what I did here, uh, let's see. I have a few different tracks. So let's, um, this one here is just, again, the sample. This one here, okay, this one we have, this is the splice version right here. And then I'm just mixing it with uh, the kit core right here. Well, actually, we can turn, well, we can turn that one off. So this is just, um, okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little confused here. This one here is just uh, the spliced break, and then my own version is uh, as well. Okay, and that's just these two. So, So you can kind of do a little bit of merging or however you feel like, uh, you know, doing it, doing up a splice. You know, there's other ways to do splicings, but these, this is just kind of the hatchet way to splice it, uh, splice things up. Another thing that can be done too, um, since, uh, since we're here, and uh, I'll show you another sort of thing to do, insert uh, MIDI track, all right, and then you can take a, a drum rack. Let's get a drum rack here, just any old drum rack. Well, not like a drum rack, but we're going to take we're going to take a blank drum rack, okay? And in C1, we can do different things, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Um, uh, instruments, okay? And then we're going to use, I believe it's sampler, right here, okay? And then Let's say, let's say we wanted just like this part right here, okay, come back to drum rack here, drag it, and then put it right into the sampler, okay, and then you can reverse it. So uh, if you wanted to reverse it or do any kind of auto manipulations with it, you can. Um, you know, it's up to you on how you want to do it. Or even change. 
All right, and you can take all the different parts. So um, once again, uh, you can take a sampler, pull it in here again. I'll show you the technique again. Take the sampler. Not don't gr don't grab simpler because simpler doesn't really do the reversing thing too well. Um, so uh, let's take this piece right here, for example. Click on your drum rack, and then once you have that highlighted like this, you can take the splice and drop it right into here. And then you have a second part. Okay. So that's another way that you can kind of do it. And it works for vocals or uh, whatever. So if you, let's... And of course, um, yeah, it works for vocals. It works for anything that you might want to sample. Uh, really kind of cool. And uh, you can add your own effects. You know, and you can generate... Um, pretty much your own way of doing it. And it ain't really much of a technique to listen to here. I'm just trying to give you guys some of the ideas on how uh, a couple of different ways that you can do individual splicing. And let's say it wasn't too cool for you on this. You know, you can actually take it and you can manipulate it a little bit your ways here. And we can, I don't know, just catch it on the transient there or something. And turn this down. Modulations, if you want, you can do your modulations. Um, you can add LFO. Uh, so at least you guys get some of the idea. Um, I'm not really going to go into these parts here too much, um, but you can, you get. I mean, it just depends on how you what you want to do. But I'm not going to get into uh, using the. Uh, sampler too much maybe we'll have a different video on that I just wanted to kind of show you guys some quick ways on how you can um, splice up a sample but um, down below I have for you uh, two uh, uncompressed well an uncompressed version of the almond break and the almond break and if you don't have it in your collection you know get it and try and um, you know you can draw influence from uh, pretty much a lot of 80s rap NWA, uh, the, the rave scene really used this sample. The sample, uh, I think, was uh, originally recorded in 1968 and uh, literally uh, has an incredible history, um, which is why I, I kind of wanted to use it on this demo. So, uh, not demo, but this video. Hopefully, um, you know, you guys picked up a little bit uh, on how to sample. Let's see, we went through what? Splicing? We went through the splice a little bit. Uh, we went convert to MIDI, and then we also went uh, to uh, basically click dragging in individual samples that you might like um, and stuff like that. And it doesn't always have to be drum pieces, you know, it could be pieces of a bass that you like from a sample or any number of other things, you know. And it can get pretty tedious when you, when you start slicing these things up, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, it turns out to be, uh, you know, some pretty cool stuff um, when, you, when you start working with uh, setting up your own kind of sound samples or using sound samples and then deriving something completely new from it. And not only that, you know, uh, using this method here uh, where I did a drag and drop into this drum rack uh, using uh, sampler, uh, you know, you can get a lot of manipulations out of just like even one song. Uh, so it's really kind of cool. You can change the pitch and all that other stuff. Maybe I'll make a video about the sampler uh, down the road. At any rate, I hope this video was useful for you guys. And uh, please uh, subscribe the video and like the video. And, uh, you know, feel free to share the video and leave comments. If, if there's particular questions you guys might have also, leave a question uh, in uh, the comments below. You know, that way I can look at the question and uh, maybe I can answer that. You know, this might be pretty basic information for for uh, moderate uh, Ableton users or and advanced users. Advanced advanced users of Ableton, this is pretty much no-brainer stuff, um, but it is the beginning of a wider world um, when it comes to, you know, sampling uh, pieces and elements uh, with Ableton. At any rate, guys, take care and peace out.